This episode of the Broke Otaku Podcast is brought to you by the Eat Shit and Diaper. That's right, the Eat Shit and Diaper. No wiping required. Welcome to the Broke Otaku Podcast. My name is AJ. With me is Marcus, aka Peon Penis is P Man Gelatin. <laughs> Oh no, it's the third impact! <laughs> oh, it was just a near third impact. And call that N3I. <laughs> Is that the it sounds like a toilet flushing. flushing. It's, that's what the near third impact was. I thought you were going to say uh, peon penises, but... AJ likes oh. to mess up the nicknames that you give him. No, no, no. I spelled it. I spelled it. I wrote the word penises. I did not even make the connection until just now. Come on. Really? <laughs> he just said third impact. What do you mean? Uh, yeah, well, that's the Weird kind of beard. show you're going to get tonight, folks. Hate to break it to you. Uh, and Alan, AJ, a.k.a. Tubby Toe. Thunder no, Scout. Penis. Shut up. Thunder Scout <laughs> Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. God, you can't read. Chrysanthemum. That's what it is, right? Yes. Is that how you say it? Thunder Scout Chrysanthemum. That's a hard word to say. I, if that's a if that's some kind of pun, I don't get it. Uh, it's but, not. <laughs> uh, Thunder Scout. I'm going to explore the world. With the power of chrysanthemums. Thunder Scouts tell are everyone here. How, tell everyone about the thunder and how pretty it is when you listen to it. Thunder Scout chrysanthemum. <laughs> is a chrysanthemum a flower? Yeah. I think. There you yes, go. I, uh, I think. Yes, I say confidently, but really only have 50% idea. I'm like 95% <laughs> sure. I, is it a type of mum? That's the real question. I think that's what mum is short for, chrysanthemums. Oh, for real? That I'm less sure about. Uh, yeah, I think you're right, because when you Google it, you get mums. So there you go. Mums. Mom yeah, is short for Mother Teresa. What, uh, yeah. Or mummy. We call her mum. I, oh, mum. It's me, Harry Potter. Mum? Oh, wait, you're dead. I forgot. Hey, Mum. Can you bless me vittles before I consume this sacrificial lamb? Mum and dead. For me demonic rituals, Mum. Harry Potter. Get me wound out, Mummy. You're a cunt, Harry Potter. You're a right, we've cunt, done. Harry. No, we, we haven't done it far. enough. I love it. Anyway. Let's keep doing it. Let's keep doing it. <laughs> What's this game you got for us, Alan? I made a game uh, in in celebration of the, like, I don't know, almost, it's more or less a year since we t- first talked about uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Has it and been I a year a, almost? That's fucking crazy. You're the one yes. who said that. Yeah, you said I, it's been yes, almost a year. It's been about a year. Because we watched it when um, it hit Netflix, and I think it hit Netflix a year ago. Damn. I one of you said that I was just going off. Of Actually, you know, it was because I remember. Wrong. I yeah, it was definitely a year ago. But anyway, All go right. ahead. So, so we did that, and now we're about to do it again because it. Uh, it was way too confusing the last time. And this, this, it's important to have context for the events of this <sighs> batshit crazy amazing anime. So, uh, all you guys have to do is tell me which happened first okay i'm gonna give you some events that highlight the backstory of the angenesis evangelion is this all universe. backstory or does this include the events of the rebuild it's all backstory so we can know okay. what the hell's going on okay you win. which is it is interesting because uh you know who says who knows whether any of this applies to the uh to the rebuilds since it's just a whole nother whole nother thing but i guess it'll be fun either way 
We can only All assume. Right, so, so which came first? Uh, Adam. Oh, hold on. Here we go. The the Katsuragi expedition. Or the first ancestral race distributes the seeds of, uh, I forget what they're called, the seeds, seeds of life. This is going to be the exact same as the last time. No, it's going to be better. <laughs> the seeds of life. Not, oh my God. The fucking, the ancestors came on the planet, that one. They did. Yes, that's correct. That happened first. Did you mean what I think you meant when you said that? Yes, I did. Okay, just making sure. He was making a dude. I mean, tundra. distribute seed. What does that sound like? We've had this conversation before. Have Gardening. We? Yes. Gardening. Harvesting. The pleasures harvesting of harvesting seeds. your seed. <laughs> 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 All right. Anyway. Inside jokes. Yay. Uh, next. Uh, let's see. Zella finds the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's the first thing. The second thing. Adam impales himself with a spear to prevent the first impact. Which one happened first? Yes. Uh, probably the f- impaling with the spear. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go with, too. That is correct. Now it's going to get difficult. Now? (laughs) Yeah. Which one came first? Adam or Lilith? Lilith. Adam. AJ is correct. Yeah. Bonus round. Which one is (laughs) the fruit? Which one is (laughs) is the white moon? Lilith. What? Which one is the white moon? Lilith. Yes, I'm wrong. Just... It's Adam. Okay. Both lose. I was just copying. Which AJ. one? <laughs> All right, Adam or Lilith? Which one is the fruit of knowledge? Lilith. Lilith. That's correct. You both redeemed yourself. All right. I'm just gonna one keep more. saying Lilith. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Yui uh, Ainami does a contact experiment with Unit 001. I wrote 001. It's just Unit 1. Uh, that or uh, Gehern Gern is set up by Zella. What's Gern Seal. again? Is that the dude? That's not. No. Garen is uh the predecessor to uh to Nerve. Oh. Nerve. Uh I uh I think that what you just said. I'm gonna Garen. say Yui touches herself at night first. <laughs> uh you would be wrong, Marcus. Uh Yui touched herself in two thousand four. Uh Garen was set up by Zila around two thousand three. Dang. Quiz. This Number already three. hasn't been a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quiz show now, guys. It's meant to simulate the feeling of watching. That's like, that's like if Alex Trebek, like in the middle of the show, was like, now we're going to play Jeopardy. It's like, the fuck <laughs> have we been doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Rest in peace, uh, Alex. R.I.P. And they can't find a, a decent host, even though they've already got one. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, oh, uh, bonus points. Who can name the three prongs of the Magi computer system? I think they reference it in the in the rebuilds. Go for it, bit. AJ. One of the three, the three aspects. <laughs> it was made by uh, Akagi's Akagi. No, okay. Re- yeah, Risuko Akagi. It's made by her mother, and she built it uh, to 
embody three aspects of herself. Mm. Do you remember what those three aspects are? The, the Pinta, Nina, the Nina, and the, the Santa Maria. The Santa Maria. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> Why is that the first thing that came to... Oh, brother. <laughs> The Holy Trinity. Holy <laughs> the Trinity. original Holy Trinity. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. That's my final answer. I don't have an answer because I was not apparently paying attention when they said that. You know, this is stuff you only really get clearly by reading. <laughs> <laughs> reading wikis and watching YouTube videos. Uh, it was... It was... Uh, a woman, a mother, and a scientist. Those are the three things. Uh, Their names were, was it Balthazar? And uh, I forget, never mind. They named the three, three oh, yeah. lines of the Magi computer thingy. Uh, I'm already so anyway, tired of talking about Ava. <laughs> you're already tired of it? Jesus. Shit's <laughs> so convoluted, man. Uh, no, so the the point is, uh, don't watch these movies. <laughs> the, the, the games, point. the games over. AJ won by like one point, I think. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm the king uh, of Evangelion. No, so there's a lot of impacts happening in these movies, and the impacts. The point is when, uh, when an Adam thing, Adam and Lilith were the the moons. They were the the moons that got sent to Earth. They both somehow ended up in the same place. That's where all this comes from. Because one's the tree of, or the fruit of knowledge, which is humans. They're weak, but they're smart. And the fruit of, bot, no, the fruit of life, which is the, the angels, because they're strong as, as, as what? Uh, I, am, I appreciate that you're trying to explain it, but it's still not making sense. You can't have both. No, because when you have both, then you become a god and you get to grant wishes and there's an impact. So all these impacts are when like an a some aspect of Adam interacts with some aspect of Lilith. What do you mean some aspect of? So like, all right. So are we talking about the <laughs> anime now or what? Is this the rebuild plot? This is all like, this is like the mechanics of the universe. Okay, as it so, applies to the rebuilds, it yeah, the rebuilds or any of it, the anime, the movies, whatever. This is this is how it works. Okay, what was I saying? I don't, I don't know. Something man. about different aspects of Lilith and Adam and their moons are there in the There was two same moons. Place. One's the tree of knowledge. Humans are smart and weak. The other one yeah. is the truth of balls, where if you jack <laughs> off hard enough. No, that you was can. the original series. <laughs> so, uh, man, I like just read this and I already forget because uh, it's complicated. But <laughs> the like Kauru is a uh, has the embryo of Adam in him, and Ray has the embryo has the soul of Lilith. So they're like counterparts, right? So. I don't know when things interact. When like when Adam touches Lilith, things go boom. But they never did. They didn't. But like things related to them. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's let's we'll, do we'll this. Get... Let's do this. All right. So there are people <laughs> presumably listening. Like five people listening. Some of them maybe <laughs> watch the rebuild. Some of them haven't. Let's set this up for people in case they haven't watched the rebuilds. Maybe they don't even know what Evangelion is. We can run through that. Now that you're thoroughly confused, you're ready to watch. You're ready to take in the rest of this. I mean, you are correct in that sense. That was a good setup to uh, prime anybody for the type of bullshittery that they're going to encounter should they ingest these four films or the original series. I'd say the original series a little bit less so because it kind of sprinkles the weirdness throughout 24 to 26 episodes. And there's a lot of slice of life and character building in that time, but these movies is a lot of like that that bullshit. <laughs> um, well, yeah, are we? We're gonna talk spoilers right off the bat. 
This is about the Evangelion rebuild. So if you didn't watch them and you're going to do that now and then come back. Otherwise, here we go. Yes. How do you want to start this? Out? You want to just dig in and just give our thoughts on all the movies? Uh, Are we focusing on whole? three and four, really? Mostly? I, I'm going to give my high level. I'm just going to say this real quick. Um, compared to the original series, these four movies were 100% more coherent, in my opinion, than the original series. Especially rewatching end of evangelion and death and rebirth um which uh, yeah didn't make any sense i think this one these were easier to follow from a plot point to plot point perspective for the most part until you get to like the end of three got a little weird and then the end of four got real weird which i kind of expected because i was waiting for the weirdness And it never really came whole hog in the first three movies. I mean, it was weird, but like it wasn't completely incoherent. And so you get to the end of the fourth movie and then it's pretty incoherent. Um, And then you got to go to the wikis to figure out what the hell's going on. Uh, But I think up until then, at least enjoyable to sit down and watch the first three or four movies. Three, we'll say three and a half movies. They're enjoyable to watch. They're fairly easy to follow. There's a few things here and there that don't quite make sense. Um, But I think that it it feels like, and I've said this before about Evangelion, that his story felt like something that he would have wrote in like English class as a teenager and turned into an anime. I feel like this is the matured version of that, these four movies, to where he took that nonsense that he wrote 20 years ago and turned it into something enjoyable from a, a being able to follow it perspective what do you think alan overall uh overall i really enjoyed the, the rebuild movies uh, it was fun to dive back into the universe and like see <clears throat> get to relive some of the best moments um with like updated visuals and effects and like yeah more coherent story um but I think I feel like they dropped the ball with the last movie, the fourth one. Um, it's yeah, it was just I was kind of disappointing. Uh, I know a lot of people were happy with how it turned out. Uh, I feel like it was a long, it was a long time spent just for kind of a not a cookie cutter, but just like it didn't live up to the rest of it to to the whole to the saga uh but but i'll get into that later marcus so everyone these mfers were giving me crap for some odd reason <laughs> last time we recorded the podcast because <laughs> they wanted to watch this and we watched nighthead 2041 instead um but i can say after watching this I don't regret that choice to not watch these four movies over the course of a weekend. Cause guess what? I didn't even watch all four for the night. I watched three and said, fuck this shit. I'm not sitting through two and a half more hours. of this convoluted weirdo bullshit. Not doing Come on for the heavily, podcast. Heavily disagree that. Not including the end of Evangelion, not including the last two episodes of the original series or the movies, Death and Rebirth, all that, not including that stuff, but heavily disagree that this was more coherent than like the first 22 or so episodes of the original series. Granted, I might be misremembering a lot because it's been a while since I saw them, but that, but my recollection in watching that show was. There was a lot more of actual day-to-day character development. You kind of gathered why uh, they were fighting and what the angels were doing and blah, blah, blah. I feel like without that foreknowledge, jumping into this, these movies, you will have no idea what the fuck is happening at all. At all. I, I, I was it's, trying to decide if that's the case because watching them, I was like, <clears throat> yeah, this kind of makes sense. But then I I don't know how much of that was just pulled from the fact that I had 
had seen Evangelion before. So ninety five percent, I promise. If you've never been exposed to Evangelion, you are just like, what the fuck is happening? Because I was watching these movies and Faith was like kind of in in the kitchen, um, pre- like she was able to hear and what was going on. And she has this weird thing; she can like half watch something that I'm watching, and then she'll just know what's going on. Even, and I'm watching in Japanese or whatever. I didn't watch these in Japanese. I watched these in English. But a lot of the times I'll be watching something subtitled. And then she'll come back to me later like, oh, ha- what happened with this guy? Because this guy was talking to this girl. And I'm like, you were paying attention to that? You were like in the kitchen cooking. Like, what the fuck? With <laughs> this in English, she had no idea what was happening. She was like, what are these people talking about? I don't get anything. The fights look cool. Like, the animation is great. Like, like the action she dug but as far as like what was happening she's just like I, I, I don't get it and i'm like you know what if i hadn't been if i wasn't aware of these characters or this world or anything i wouldn't either i wouldn't know what angels were i wouldn't know why they're fighting i wouldn't know why they keep attacking tokyo 3 what what the geo front is for what the fuck uh Sela is what is nerve nothing none of that i would have no idea really i just know that weird attacks are happening on the earth and there are chill children and at least they called them the th- first and second third child <clears throat> and not first and second third children this time that was cool um anyway i'm gonna cut myself off uh no regrets not watching the last one because that's too long and uh <laughs> this and, is the whole point the whole reason we went back is because the fourth movie came out you're yeah. right you're right have fun talking about that <laughs> um, and uh what else was i gonna say i will say i do agree with my wife the fighting and the animation is awesome i think the 2d animation holds up way better than the 3d animation i mean especially in the first few movies because the first one came out in what like 2007 um yeah. so you know that's how these things go 2d always age is better than 3d It's true for video games and it's true for animation um so the first two movies watching that like that kind of saved the experience for me is the avas are cool and the action is cool and the angels are like so freaking creative that it made my mind explode like i love those the the way that they did the angels in the first two movies and then the third movie um for reasons i will get into made me want to pull my teeth out of my head Let's just get into the third movie because I thought it's the weakest of the four. Um, <clears throat> so there's essentially a time jump of 14 years between two and three. And they do make that clear eventually. I only knew because I think it's in the description. Um, they say they it. Necess- they, okay, they do say it. Yeah, they, they spell it out. They I mean, take their more than once. merry time before they tell anybody the first That's time. what it, yeah, because it but, was like, what the hell's going on? But yeah, it was a significant jump, and they they don't say it right off the bat. Um, but most of that movie is spent with Shinji and <clears throat> what's his name, Alan? Kaoru. Oh, well, Kaoru. Kaoru. Yeah, Kaoru. Um, just doing stuff, like they just doing stuff, and it and they're talking and they're playing piano. But I feel like most of that movie, at least, it felt like the longest part of that movie was just them being together. Um which got very boring. The beginning is cool and the end is cool, but the middle just drags. So for me, it's the weakest of the four. I, I rewatched, I meant to rewatch. So I watched these like two weeks ago before we talked about Nighthead. <clears throat> um, I think I, I don't know if I, if I got through the fourth one at that point, but uh, I watched it shortly after. So I went back to refresh myself a little bit um, and I basically rewatched the third movie, the end of the second one and all of the third one. Um, and I didn't get a chance to rewatch the fourth one, but I read, I reread the, the synopsis and uh, or read the synopsis to kind of refresh. And I don't think there's a whole, the fourth one's not super complex uh, really. It's just kind of like this big, like day crescendo on the whole series kind of i feel like i agree uh, until like 30 minutes to the end 
yeah yeah it gets yeah it gets crazy at the end it gets nonsensical at the end i've got some examples of the kind of shit that uh marcus you would have laughed you would there's some great great material uh in the fourth movie 30 minutes but, to the uh, end i'd have to wait that long uh no you get it you know it's sprinkled throughout but uh but no it gets they turn it up to fucking 17 at the end uh but i really found myself enjoying the third movie because it was like okay everything you thought you knew is out the window at this point there's a time jump uh you know uh how can I think of her name? Uh, Asuka? Misato? No, uh, Misato, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Misato and Asuka and uh, Mari, who, you know, where did she come from? Um, Wait, did they ever say now, her name before, like, the fourth movie? They did, yeah. Mari Magnanimous or you <laughs> illustrious. Mag- yeah. Mari who? Who is this? Scary. Which one is this? Wasn't that her name? Mary is scary. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, that's we'll get there. We'll get there. That's some <laughs> we'll get there. Oh my god. That's some eleventh that's some of the eleventh hour bullshit. Yeah. Uh, the, the Christian Bible parallelisms are just like kind of ridiculous yeah. towards the end. Yeah. Uh <laughs> but what the hell was I saying? But like I it was cool. Like I, I feel like the uh, the fourth movie, like they went too ham on the on the three D stuff. And so like it kind of ruins it. There's not enough 2D to balance out the 3D. I feel like the third one was like they they could do some things in 3D, but they still relied mostly on the 2D and they and it looks good and like the sound design was on point. Like the skulls crunching and shit uh was so satisfying. Um yeah, and then the fourth one they just kind of like it feels kind of sloppy. And, like, there's a lot of ugly 3D. There's some, like, bad English doves with, like, long pauses. And it was not satisfying for me. Uh, Basically, it ends up being a happy ending for Shinji, which, like, yay, he finally, you know, accepts himself. But, like, for me, I'm like, that's not what this shit is about. It's about him breaking and, like, not coming back and the consequences of that. Um, so, I mean, they kind of worked it in where, like, the world ends, like, three times in the last two movies. (laughs) There's, like, a second, the end of, the end of the second movie is the second impact. I thought that was the the second impact. Okay. Yeah. They they they... define the impacts in the fourth movie. The first impact was, like, all of the, like, sea life. The second impact was like all of the land life or something. And the third impact was supposed to be like the spirit life or something. Or maybe it was the fourth. Imp- I don't know. Uh, the first impact was when Lilith and Adam, the black and the white moon, the two different seeds of life from the predecessor race, the ancient ancestrals. And do you know this information race. from the movie or from extra curriculum? No, you don't get that. You get this from reading. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, so explain so, it in the context of the movie. Like, what do you know since we're actually talking about the movie right now? So like, uh, in the context of the movie, the first impact happens. Um, <clears throat> and then it's the Katsuragi expedition where they dig up Adam um and blah 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 blah. so the angels are the children of adam and humans the lilin are the children of lilith and it makes sense in my head but then when i try to explain it's just like bleh. that's a, um, that's what the author the guy who created these that's what he says too it makes sense in my head but then when i try to make movies out of it nobody gets them <laughs> yeah because your head is fucked <laughs> but it's like anyway, it's things. a it's a double edged sword, man. Because some of the stuff that he's able to come up with is so damn creative that it's like, wow, that's amazing. But then he just goes off the deep end with it, and it's like, dude, you have this whole world built in your head that yeah, you can't transcribe in any form. That's not like thousands of years of fucking oral tradition and <laughs> novelization. So anyway, continue, Alan. You're explaining the impacts. Uh, so that's what I was trying to say. Like, so the first impact was these two seeds of life, like kind of colliding, um, and creating like a god-killing apocalypse event. 
Because when the fruit of knowledge and the fruit of life combine, it's too powerful. And this is what Gendo wants all along. He's trying to uh, manipulate these things into happening so that he is the person in control when the fourth impact happens or whatever. So that he can like make this wish with this power to be reunited with his wife. So that's part of what human instrumentality is where every human becomes just a single entity and we all share a soul or we all we're all just one entity all of our consciousnesses are one entity and there's no loneliness or fear or whatever and we all just have a complete connection and understanding um <clears throat> so that's kind of so that starts at the end of the second movie uh whatever shinji like gives up his uh his humanity to save Ayanami, who's just been eaten by an angel. Uh, so that that's why the, that's where the impact started, I think, because yeah, because the, the next movie that was the near third impact. No, this was the second impact. They called oh, it, it they 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 said it's the it's the the end of the second impact so it was like this it's like there was a near second impact and then they're finishing the second impact oh my god at the end of the second <laughs> movie um because the the angel being a children of being a child of adam and ray having the soul of lilith so the angel eats the ava with ray inside yeah um and that triggers his thing, and then Shinji, if he gives up his humanity or whatever, and like, uh, since his mother's, and I don't know, somehow he becomes the trigger. Okay. Um, but anyway, so the world ends basically, and then there's this big time jump, and uh, and then it happens again. They go and they take the spears out of Lilith because this, Kaoru tells Shinji the spears will. Uh, you know, can be used to turn back time and save the world, but it doesn't. And the world ends again. And that was that's the near, near third, third impact. impact. In 3i. Wasn't Isn't it? it? I'm yeah, pretty because sure that's it. At the start of the fourth movie, they talk about it. Like, right, oh, because Kaoru almost... stops it. Kaoru stops it by he impales himself with the spear again while they're both in unit 13 because it's a dual pilot thing. And then they use the, the collar thing to, to explode his head. So mm -hmm. that stops the third impact. But then they're talking and... about a fourth impact like after that. I don't know. That's where they lost me. I mean, they lost me long before that. But don't they? But I mean, like it cut. Yeah, like if you understand, like it kind of makes sense. It begins to make sense the more you like read up on the uh, like the mechanics of it. Like I was saying, but uh, that's nice. I didn't do but that. Yeah, no one did. I want to. Without that, um, <laughs> what were we even talking about? I don't so, know. <laughs> so, the so the third movie is like it's beautiful. There's like the explosions are huge or just all the movies in general. The explosions are enormous. The sounds are so satisfying. Um, and it's just it's just a fun like action, like violent, crazy psychological bender. But yeah, I, I, feel I feel like, like for the me, fourth movie lived up to that. Well, it's it's frustrating because <clears throat> what I kind of get from Evangelion, what I kind of want from Evangelion is the big robot fights, which are cool, right? Um, the kind of poor decision-making from Shinji, like he's just doing stuff because he's like an emo teenager kid. Um, and then kind of the psychological, spiritual, whatever warfare that kind of goes on in people's heads. And like, I don't think you get that a lot from the rebuilds. Um, they kind of yeah they kind of they they water it down a lot which yeah. part of me is like okay it makes the the rebuilds more consumable um but it also kind of takes away a bit of the spirit of evangelion until you get to the end of the fourth movie and then it kind of jumps a shark and it's like i 
I was watching it and my wife was in the room. She's like, do you even know what's going on? And I said, no, I don't. I don't. Uh, which was true because they lost me about 30 minutes to the end. Um, yeah, it does favor action uh, in over the, you know, the kind of psychological aspect, uh, which, you know, is to be expected of like, you know, a series of films rather than like a 26 episode series. Is it roughly right. uh, what's math? 26 since half an hour. It's like 13 hours. Not even, which these movies are probably like hour and a half, two hours, probably like 10 and maybe eight hours altogether. So they had more time to do what they were trying to do, uh, minus the like psychotic uh, acid trip of the last two episodes. Yeah, and that's OK. But uh, yeah, I well, mean, in a just... way, the movies were trying to do more because the first the first movie doesn't depart too terribly far from the show. Right. The second, like the first part of the second movie adds in a couple of things that are different, mainly the one new glasses, Ava pilot. I don't Mm -hmm. remember her name. That's Mari. Mari. Uh, She's new, but there's a lot of stuff that's still kind of similar. There's still like day in the life of Shinji and Asuka and Ray and, um, I want my dad to love me, blah, blah, blah. Misato is trying to help me, but sometimes it's mean sometimes, but then the end of that is different with the whole thing with, uh, with Ray. Um, like that whole end sequence and that whole battle and the geo front being attacked in the way that it was, that was different. And then, so, and then three is this whole other different thing. Yeah. They introduced Kaoru, which he was in the end of Ava in the originals, but his role is completely different. If I'm remembering correctly. And well, he still teaches Shinji. Like he, like he's the first time Shinji feels like cared for really because he's like, he's there for Shinji. That's right. Kinda... Right. So I guess that's similar um, to the original, but there's no time jump in the original. And now right. there's a time jump now. So it's like, and then the fourth one I didn't see, but apparently they do a bunch of different, they have to do a bunch of different stuff from there. So it's not even like they were trying to mimic what was set out beforehand. They were trying to, no. sum, they were trying to like sum up maybe like the first half of what was before. And then they just went in a completely different direction with a bunch of new elements and stuff and making things weirder and weirder. So it seems. Yeah. Yeah. They- I think a lot of what you get from the series as well, like extending it over time, like they kind of make up for it in the fourth movie with the slice of life stuff. Cause it, that's where Shinji's like emotional breakdown happens. But that's also where you see Ayanami, Ayanami, is that her name? Ray. Ray Ayanami. Yeah. That's not really her. It's like a clone of her, uh, like live her life or find where her life is until it gets to a certain point um but yeah i think in in some ways that makes the fourth movie i think better than the others um but it does feel like there's a lot of downtime and shinji does play the bratty kid kid role kind of well which you can't really blame him but at the same time it's like yeah frustrating well like you get a lot of uh like resolution that you know i think a lot of people wanted and uh you know it did feel good it was like okay they're in like a safe place and you get to see like some of the older characters like toji and that other guy you get to see them like grow up and like kind of find a way to live in this like world that's been ruined by the events uh you know that we've witnessed throughout the story um so like that feels good and then like you kind of you kind of get to see shinji processing like everything and like Asuka's there and like she's kind of helping him in her like you know backhanded way um and she's kind of admitting like how she felt about Shinji and you get to see Rey like yeah it's a clone of Rey it's not the original Rey but it's like she's finding a place uh to to be long or like you know she's she's living like a, a normal life a semblance of a life like so that all is like is pretty satisfying uh, and then 
it well then <laughs> then it's big spoiler uh ray this clone of ray cannot exist outside of like nerve hq or whatever for some reason um like she's basically she's on a on a on a ticking clock um so she just one day like she runs out of time and her head explodes like the same way Kaoru did kind of but it's explodes into like the orange tang and uh and like this is where it bothered me because i'm like oh shit like shinji was just starting to come back and now he's gonna you know this is gonna push him over the edge but it didn't he it just kind of happened he was just kind of like oh man and then like yeah, he got over it, it like really way too it. yeah he got over it way too quickly and i was just like wait a minute that's not the hell's going on here and then they proceed to like have this ridiculous setup where uh they're in a the anti-universe and there's the quantum let me read some of this shit uh that i wrote down because it was so ridiculous um so basically it comes down to a showdown between shinji and his father and they're both in ava's when i was just kind of like it's like yeah they had to do that but they also didn't um I was like, okay, now he's fighting his his dad in a robot. Like, Gendo's never been inside in, in Ava in the whole shit. And now they want to do this. And here's what she said. Um, this is Mari explaining to Shinji. He's, like, getting into Ava one last time. She says, Unit 12 is overlapping compliant. By incorporating Vessel of the Atoms, it's in an extra four-in-one state. Thanks to that, we're able to navigate through the anti-universe pretty easily. Destroy Unit 13 before the anti-L systems fail and everybody becomes coreized. <laughs> referring to like the Ava cores, like the red orbs. Uh, that's the only way. <laughs> that's the only way. And then Shinji says, I understand. Which is hilarious because I'm like, I don't know. Like I was reading like on Reddit, people are like saying how like, the, the, the films kind of like self are kind of self-aware in a way with like some of the the way they treated like the fan service like go from something really shocking to like a you know a shot of like Mari's chest or something like so jarringly like we don't really have time to process what just happened um uh, but that's that's another another discussion um and then they go like oh Shinji's sync rate is not 0 it's the closest number to 0 which is infinity <laughs> Oh god, like, that was the what? worst. Yeah. Uh and Yeah, and then they not a number by the way. Right. And then they get into <laughs> Yeah, and then all of a sudden Ma- Ma- Mari is uh Fuyutsuki like says to her he calls her Mary Iscariot, which like is some reference to like G- who was it? Joseph in the Judas? Bible. Ju- yeah, Judas, Judas Iscariot, the betrayer. Yeah, of that's Caesar? In, I heard that. I was like, what is that supposed to mean? Is that or supposed no, the to be betrayer, saying, the betrayer of Jesus? He's the one who yeah. betrayed Jesus. Yeah, and it's yeah. like is is it supposed to Jesus. signify that she's a traitor somehow? But Yeah, it seemed like this like this uh biblical tie-in that was supposed to like be this like the way they delivered it was like, "Oh, wow, twist and like bombshell." And it was just like, "Um, what?" So yeah, it, it you get had a lot no of that weight. shit. It had no weight at all because it in context, made no sense. Yeah, and just the way he said it was just like, Mary is scary. And I'm like, Mary is scary? Like, I had never heard that name before. <laughs> I'm just like, is this a cartoon character? Um, which, yeah, it is. Um, anyway. Uh, but, I'm looking at Reddit, I digress. what that means. <laughs> Gotta look up what it means, otherwise you just won't know. Yeah, so then, so then, like, you go on, they're fighting in Ava's, and, like, uh, but it's, it's not a physical landscape, it's a, it's a mental landscape, so they're, they're, you know, battling in all these different scenes, and one of them's, like, a classic, like, uh, you know, what's the damn genre, tokusatsu scene, where they're, you know, fighting in a down, big downtown, and buildings are getting toppled, and uh what the hell was i saying oh and then like gendo finally like opens up to shinji and it 
and it turns out that oh he's just like Shinji and he was uh, aloof and like didn't and he shut himself off from pain and you know now you understand and now everyone has closure and you're just like okay fine like that's kind of I don't know it just is it wasn't awesome enough it just felt like oh yeah the obvious thing of course he's it's just a cycle and you know we're all just kind of victims of our parents in a way or whatever um well anyway that's my that's my rant about the ending i'm surprised you guys watched it dubbed it was terrible um but uh it was doing weird things um for me when i was trying to find like like it listed all the languages but it listed all the languages like in their actual foreign script so I couldn't tell like what was what and my internet was being slow and I was like, ah, screw it. I guess it was just made to watch, be watched in English. Um, so I just watched it dubbed and yeah, I couldn't find bad, Japanese and I hated it. Couldn't find it. Amateurs. I know. I mean, there were three like sets, th- three language options in characters that I didn't understand, and it seemed like I tried all of them, and none of them were Japanese. But I didn't. Uh, I don't know. I I just stuck it out with the English, which I I hated at first, but then I got used to it. Yeah, I thought all of the female voices were terrible. Um, Shinji's voice was appropriate but annoying. Everybody yeah, I hate, yeah, I hated uh, Misato at first, but then I just got used to it. I watched it I in mean, Japanese, As- and fine. it was... Yeah, I gotta bring up Asuka real quick. Let me finish my thought here. Um, watching in Japanese, I watched it... I watched the first three in Japanese, and I think I watched part of the fourth one in English. Um, just because, like, there's so much being said, and they had, at some points they had people talking over other people, and I'm like, I don't know what the hell's going on. So I turned it on dubs, but the dubbing was weird because they would just break up sentences in ways that didn't make sense. It'd be like, I'm going to go get in the Ava. Yeah, they and, did that a couple times. It was, yeah, it just seemed in the like fourth movie? sloppy. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, I get it in like the first two or three because it was still like, I mean, it was late 2000s. Like I could, I could understand like the dubbing isn't perfect, but like. This day and age, like you can get dubbing pretty close to matching voices and having a coherent sentence that doesn't sound like sing songy and broken in the wrong places. And it just felt it was just it was kind of jarring just hearing it. How they bad did it in the was. third movie too. Mari's talking and uh, she was like, I guess this is what it's like piloting an Ava <laughs> or something like that. It was just like it's like no, they they forced that pause to. They should have wrote wrote in that. Yeah, uh, they should have written that differently uh, with the dubbing to avoid that pause. Because it was like, yeah, the words have to sort of match the amount, but like, just say use different words. I, I don't know. Uh, so but it, yeah, what it, happened to what happened to Oscar at the end of the fourth movie? You know, that's another <laughs> problem I had <laughs> is that it didn't it didn't do her justice. Like she was, so they're in this, like this camp or this like colony or, you know, this town that people are kind of trying to make it work. And like, basically she just kind of admits like, Oh, I'm afraid of rejection or whatever. or I don't want to be alone or I have feelings for Shinji, whatever it was. I, uh, but like, that's it. And then she just kind of fades into the background while this shit happens with Shinji and it's like they never really got to have like their moment that they kind of deserved. Well, and even after that, like Shinji and Mari kind of it's assumed that I guess what ends up happening is Shinji creates this world without Eva's yeah. and uh, it shows him and Mari living in it, but then it never shows Asuka living in it or doing anything in it. So you just there's no closure with her. Like this yeah. world's created for Shinji and for uh Mari, but then Asuka gets none of it. I don't know. It just didn't sit well. Yeah, I remember just as it was all happening, I was just kinda like, like, what about 
like, come on, like she's basically the other the other side of the coin here. Like you got everything going on with Shinji, but like he's he's her foil or she she's his foil where like, you know, her issues are playing off of his issues and they're both kind of like, you know, the way they clash is because of their their respective like mental turmoils like manifesting. So it's like give us the, <laughs> you know like what the hell happened to her? It's like okay, she's talking to a puppet and like admitting things to herself, but like that wasn't that was not nearly satisfying for me. What was that Rip Van Winkle reference about? Do you guys remember I, that? I don't remember that. It was uh the one dude, the guy I can't remember his name, who is flirting with Misato all the time. Do you know what I'm talking oh. about? The dude in the, like the first or second movie. Koji or Yeah, he says I've been gone two years and already I feel like Rip Van Winkle. Yeah, Rip Van Winkle, he uh went to sleep for like ten years with some bullshit, came back and nobody knew who he was or something like that. Okay. Well that makes sense then. I didn't Google it, but I just thought it was an odd quote to throw in there. Yeah, I can't remember the how the folktale went exactly. I just remember he went to sleep for some inordinate amount of time. And then shit was different when he got back. Well, Marcus, why do you hate Evangelion? <laughs> um, because <laughs> Nighthead is way better. Y'all gave me all the shit for watching. Um, yep, I'll say it all the time. Actually, well, it's funny because I don't hate Evangelion. Um, I remember the original I liked until it got stupid at the end. Both versions didn't like either one of them. Um, these first two movies, I can't say that I loved them, but the fighting and the creativity with the angels and the weirdness of them was so well executed. Like those battles were just super fun to watch. Yeah. Like the freaking, I can't remember what number the angel was, but it's the one where it's essentially this like glass tetrahedron that just is constantly changing shape. And it's like, yeah. what the fuck is this thing? Is it a living being? Is it a machine? Like, what is it? It was, it was just odd. And it was so dangerous um, that, you know, seeing them fight, fight that thing was cool. And then there's just a lot of visceral moments. Like these machines are just traumatic experiences for these teenagers. Like, I don't even know why, like they even a choose children be how the children continue to pilot these things after terrible things happen to them because they feel everything that happens to them, all their injuries and stuff. And the Avas themselves are these weird things that aren't really mechs. They're these hu giant humanoids with armor that like get ripped apart all the time. And then they grow extra limbs and wings and they have odd teeth and eyeballs. And it's all fucking crazy. It's crazy. So it's fun to watch, um, especially when it's well animated like it is for these movies. So. That that saves it for me, but one of the things one of the things that my wife said when she was uh watching some of it over my shoulder, she was like, I don't like any of these characters. And I was like, Huh, you know what? I don't really either. I kinda like Ray, but like only kind of. I don't love her, but she's Lisa fine. Lisa's cool. She's like a badass. She's like calling the shots like as they as they play out. Like she is handling the shit, like making the tough calls. And like yeah, she's a But flawed. her character changed dramatically between two and three, which I get. Like that's cool, yeah. but like I don't feel like she had much personality in well, the, let me get, the last let me get, two movies. I'll get I'll get to three. I'll get okay. to three. Um, which she's part of the reason, not just her, but she's part of the reason I wanted to pull the, the teeth out of my head um, in the third movie. But I didn't say I hated them, the characters. I just said I didn't really like them that much. Misato is definitely a competent person, but, and maybe, maybe it's the, the voice acting that kind of threw me off. Maybe if I watched it in Japanese, I wouldn't have like felt she was so abrasive, but man, I hated her voice. I hated yeah, it was so much. I got used um, to it, but it was it was a it was a, a curve. I but yeah, there's 
there's no reason for me to hate her. And I, and I recognize that she's a competent individual, but I didn't really like her. And I don't know why. Um, Asuka fucking hate Shinji. I pity slash is, am inter- eternally frustrated with Gendo's a piece of shit. And then everybody else is just kind of there. They're fine. It's whatever. Um, so that being the case, there's nothing like as far as the story goes that really is making me like it any better than I would say I liked the uh, um, the series because the series I felt like I had to spend time with them more at least, and they had more conversations that didn't feel like they were pseudo philosophical, abstract, this that and the other thing. They didn't feel as broken, I guess. Uh, one one thing I liked about the fourth movie was that you got to see people who Shinji grew up with, like living their lives as a result of the the impacts, the second impact or the near third impact or whatever impact it was in the fourth movie. And like, you didn't really get that in the series. I don't think like you saw like what Shinji was going through and what the other pilots and the people at nerve were going through. But like everybody else, like just, you didn't really get a whole lot of time with those characters if I'm remembering correctly. But in the fourth movie, you do get like, Oh, this dude, he's not a doctor, but he's helping out in this little village where the people are just trying to survive and they're, you know, doing gardening and and farming and, um, having babies and raising families in this world that's basically been destroyed. And it's really under constant threat from, you know, another third impact or fourth impact or whatever impact is, is looming. Um, so it did give a lot of kind of perspective from the people on the ground, uh, that you didn't get in the other three movies. So that is one thing I, I think is, is good about the fourth movie. Okay. Well, I didn't get there and I'll explain why. So (laughs) the last part of the second movie is actually pretty good. I was into it. Um, because you have the whole thing where, Shinji has to fight Asuka because her Ava was taken over by Angel. That whole thing was dope. He doesn't want to. Gendo, his father, like, basically assumes command, remote command, not remote command, but dummy command of his Ava. And it's like a grisly scene. His, the Ava that Shinji is in that's now being taken over by the dummy system is just devouring the Ava slash Angel of Asuka and he thinks she's dead probably so he's like nah I'm not doing this no more I'm leaving which is probably the most baller thing Shinji's done in all of Ava it's just to be like fuck you dad I'm out um but then the city gets attacked again he comes he ends up being back into Ava to help save everything um it's a really cool battle Geo Front which is their headquarters is about to get destroyed um he saves Ray by d- giving up his humanity and opening a firmament in the sky called the corridor of guff or some shit. Um, bunch of weird, bunch of weird stuff happens. It's, it's weird. It's heady. It's crazy, but it's like you, you, you sense his desire just to save Ray, just to save this girl. Um, so that was cool. That ends. Then the third movie starts and much like Shinji, you have no idea what the fuck is happening. He wakes up and um, you don't know this yet, but it's 14 years later. But when he wakes up, everybody looks different. Everything looks different. All of a sudden, this doesn't look like an Ava movie. This looks kind of like a studio trigger movie. It's like, all right, I don't know why, what, why anything is happening right now. They're in the middle of a battle. Shinji's like talking to his old uh, crew people, his old command center people. They're all giving the stink eye. He doesn't know why the fuck. But he just keeps like asking everybody, like, what's going on? I can pilot an Ava, and they're all just like, ooh, Shinji, shut up, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, why the fuck is everybody treating him so shitty? I don't know what's going on. There's a battle. It, and if they're treating him so shitty and there's a battle and they don't want him to talk, then why don't they like escort him to a room or keep him in the same place that he was in rather than let him on the bridge of this thing running around being annoying and whining? Like, somebody tell me what's going on. It's like, obviously, they can't right now because they're in a battle. But. I get your feelings, Shinji, because I don't know what's going on either. Everything is different, and I don't know why. Um, so, Asuka's back. 
He's happy about that. Finds out he finds that out because he sees Unit Two, which is the Ava the She pilots or whatever. She has an eye patch on. Um, blah blah blah. Anyway, battle happens. It's over. At this point, I am freaking like, two. My mind is twofold. Will you motherfuckers please explain to Shinji why you're all being assholes to him? And Shinji, will you settle the fuck down and go somewhere until the battle's over to get debriefed? I don't understand why you're not getting debriefed right now. I don't understand why you're like not in a room by yourself right now and just letting this battle happen. What's going on? So it's like, like my mind is split because I'm like just annoyed at everybody. Like I don't like, why are they treating you like shit? Like you came back and you saved the day and everything. So over the course of like 30 minutes, it takes like 30 minutes. You get fragmented pieces of information that everything that Alan explained already. Shinji uh, gave his humanity up to save Ray, and that caused the second impact, which essentially was the end of the world or an end of the world, I guess. Um, so now everybody's mad at him, but he wasn't meaning to do that. It wasn't his fault. And I'm really mad because the only reason Shinji ever got into Ava anyway is because everybody else in the world kept saying you need to pilot an Ava. And now they're treating him like a shit for piling in Ava. So that made me really fucking mad. Because it's like, you all know how much of a fragile little bitch this dude is. Like, you can't just treat him like this after he did the thing that you wanted him to goddamn do. What the fuck is wrong with all of you? So, so like, just, uh, and then Asuka's just being her normal bitchy self. So that made me mad. And, like, he keeps asking questions and everybody's just like, you don't deserve to know. We're not telling you. This is like, all right, well, that's going to help him stay put and behave like you want him to. And, I mean, like, yeah, freaking Misato says the most cutting thing she can say to Shinji, the kid whose whole identity is just wanting to belong and wanting to be worth something to someone. The whole reason he even pilots at Ava, she's, he's like, what, what can I do? And she goes, from now on, do absolutely nothing okay cunt like what the fuck god like so so then um so i was just frustrated that whole time because like all of this information comes out so fragmented and so slow that the whole time i'm like wanting everybody to just chill like either do one of two things explain the situation or handle the battle quit being butt hurt and giving shinji like these looks that he doesn't deserve and then settle up later, like do one of those two things and they wouldn't. So that made me mad. Um, so then the whole, uh, he Ray Ray's clone. Well, I mean, all of Ray's are clones. Ray's not a real person. Uh, but the next version of Ray that he actually didn't save and never met, but he thought he saved her, um, breaks in with, her Ava, who is the child of Adam, or I guess she's the child of Adam. Movie doesn't explain that though. They just start saying it. Um, it takes her back to Nerve HQ that was destroyed, the Geo Front. Uh, that was that's Ground Zero for the second impact that Shinji caused. Um, and then nobody really even briefs him. He's just like, "You're back." And then Gendo's father is like, "You're gonna pilot the new Ava with Kairu." In these two pilots. That is all. It's like, bitch, a lot of shit has happened. Gendo, like, tell his goddamn son what the, what the fuck is up. Tell him. They don't. They're like sitting in this boring ass room all day until you don't want to. And then you find a little weird boy playing piano. And then he don't even explain stuff to you. He's just like, play piano with me. Doesn't it feel good when two melodies converge or whatever? And I'm actually the opposite of AJ because AJ was like into the beginning and the end of the movie and hated the middle. I liked the middle because I'm just like, yeah, J Shinji, just fuck all these people, man. Fuck them. Just play piano with this dude. Like, it's cool. <laughs> Everything kind of slowed down. It was still abstract and still didn't make a whole lot of concrete sense. But at the very least, I'm just kind of spending time with Shinji trying to uh, figure out what's the deal with Ray. And then he's playing piano and shit with Kaoru. Um, and then the old, uh, the, the, the Lieutenant guy, I don't remember his name. The old guy kind of like 
levels with him and explains a little bit of what his father's trying to do. Uh, so yeah. And then, uh, the end of the movie, I can't even remember. I mean, we've been talking about it this whole time. How does the end of that one go? Oh yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. So this was the last straw. This is the reason why I did not watch four. I was like, I'm not sitting through two and a half hours more of this shit. I'm not doing it. It's because... (laughs) Yeah, they they had the mission. Kaoru and Shinji had the mission to go get the spears out of Lilith or whatever. And uh, in the interim time where Shinji was hanging out with Kaoru and learning to trust and open up to him, one of the things he kept saying about Kaoru was, you're amazing. You know everything. Because Kaoru would fix things for him. He'd like share insights. He like helped him be better at the piano. He did all of this stuff. So he just like looked up to Kaoru so much. And I thought they were going to make out for a second, but they didn't. Um, but, but he was just like, you know, everything. So they're in the Ava and they're piloting it and they're going to get the spears. Kaoru all of a sudden is like, wait a minute. Both of those spears look the same. One of them's supposed to be Longinus. The other one's supposed to be some other shit, but both of them look like the Longinus spear. Shinji, who looks up to this guy who said he knows everything who is just like completely trust him implicitly is like, well, you said if we get the spears, it'll turn everything back. But he's like, I don't know, man. I got a bad feeling about this. So he sits there and just starts thinking and stops piloting and just puts on his anime thinking face. And then Asuka and Mari come because obviously they're going to try to stop this from happening. So he's not fighting. Shinji starts fighting them to get to the spears because he's like, you said if I get the spears, everything will go back to normal because you showed me the end of the earth and that made me sad. So I want to undo it. So they're fighting. He's still just thinking to himself like, hmm, what is this? This is, this is, something's wrong. It's like, would you fucking please tell him what it is? Look, figure it out, figure it out. Shinji the whole time is just ignoring the fact that he's in deep contemplation trying to figure out what's wrong, what's going on. He's just like, you should help me fight. Anyways, eventually make it to the spear and Kaoru half-heartedly is like, hey, I don't think you should do this. I really don't think you should do this. And then he goes ahead and pulls the spears out. And then third fucking near impact and NCIS, New York, whatever the fuck happens. <laughs> um, And then Kaoru's head explodes and I was just like no 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 I'm not watching more it made me so angry because now Shinji's all crying in the fetal position in his pod that's ejected from the Ava he caused another end of the world apparently and then who do I get to see bitch ass Asuka comes back starts kicking him and shit I'm just like man I hate this bitch and then um like Ray clone is like, uh, so they all leave together. And Oscar's like, come on Shinji. And I'm like, wait, didn't you like want to beat the shit out of him when you first saw him earlier in the movie? When you didn't well, that was, to explain to no, him the part you're... where she like punches the glass. And, like she makes a comment shortly after that, where she's like, Oh, I still couldn't tell him. Or I, I, after all this time, I, I don't know. Something hinting at like the feelings that she has for him. So that was supposed to be come up some that was supposed to be part of that. But it wasn't yeah, it wasn't very uh Okay, I very guess. clean cut. Well, I don't understand why she was so mad at him anyway, if she had feelings for him. Um I guess everybody was mad that he ended the world, but he definitely didn't know that was gonna happen. Matter of fact, nobody did. Except for Gendo, I guess, and Sella. But um But yeah, man, I was just I was just too mad. I was, I, was, I was too mad about things. People not talking. The show just, or the movies not just explaining what was going on and everything feeling so convoluted and obtuse. And I'm just like, you know what? Two and a half hours is a long time. I'm going to go do something else. <laughs> I wasn't, like, I was, uh, I was enthralled by, like, the, I don't know, but just, like, the confusion of it i was just like i wanted to see what happens next to try and get those answers and i mean i should i should have known they aren't like concrete answers but i was like i was into it and even like rewatching most of it uh today i was like 
this I don't know. It's something about these these movies, just like something about the setup to just pull me in. But I want to go back to what you said about it didn't feel like like an Ava movie or it didn't feel like Evangelion uh, at the start of the third movie. And I agree. I think feel like the third and fourth movie it doesn't it doesn't have that same like I don't know that magic that the 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 series had and the other movies were like okay some shits you know another angel's coming soon and like these they're probably in the avas but like shit's getting more and more like you know intense and they're how how much can they handle um you kind of lost that that uh that rhythm that they had um and then like they've got this big ship that like huge explosions keep happening and but somehow the ship like stays in one piece and i know it's like powered by unit one or something and it's made of like you know it's probably made of future star metal or whatever but and like, it can make fleets of other warships fly yeah okay sure you um, don't remember that I think I do. I don't even think I I got that that's what was happening. I did. I do. do yeah, they were like, like a bunch of they were like in the sky. We're going to fly, and they were all like, "We haven't tested that yet." I don't. Oh. I haven't. I haven't flown in gravity control yet. The one like the 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 pilot of the whole vessel was saying, and then they were all going like Misato or uh whatever her last name is Kataragi, whatever it is, uh captain like we can't do that no 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 and she's just like um yeah we're doing it and of course because it's anime they do it successfully uh and so that's the the end of the battle when they win the la the scene is that big vessel is flying and the whole entire fleet because i thought they were about to dip on the fleet i'm like there's a bunch of boats like y'all just about to dip out on this spaceship <laughs> and, and they didn't they didn't like they started flying and then all of the other ships were levitating over the Red Sea with them. Yeah. So that happened. I mean, shit. It got it was crazy. But like I don't know, like just the the, the and this is where like I feel like the appreciation and like the 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 what am I trying to say? The excitement or the uh enthusiasm for the series like it kind of comes from two places like the fiction is like pretty compelling but like borderline nonsensical but like as like uh uh an analogy or representation of like someone's struggle with depression or like spirituality or like self-identity the way that those themes are represented is done so in an interesting way but I think the combination of those two things is what makes it so strong. Not either one of them being necessarily that strong on their own. I like the idea. I just don't like how confusing it is. I don't yeah, like exactly. How... That's that's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah, like I feel like you can do that. All of those things and tell the story differently. I don't know. Tell it in a way that I don't even want to say accessible because I understand that these movies are not for people that are not familiar with Evangelion at all. They really aren't. Um, but I don't know. I just, I don't feel any connection. The only connections that I feel to anything is frustration. That's the thing that I notice all of the time is how frustrated I am with characters rather than how much I root for them. Like I'm only end up only end up rooting for anybody when they're fighting because the fighting is good and cool. And the stakes are high, obviously, because it's an existential threat that they're dealing with on a uh, monthly, baseless, weekly, however, however many times the uh, angels come. So that, that thread always feels real, but all the stuff in between, it's, 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 it's just a lot of Shinji just struggling so hard. And I get that that's a real thing, but it's hard to have fun watching it for me or be interested in it for me, the way that they present it. 
Yeah. Well, and it, it feels like it's going to, like, you know, it's not going to amount to much <clears throat> because you know it's going to be nonsensical by the end because it's Evangelion. Like, if you knew going into it, like, hey, there's going to be a payoff, everything's going to make sense, it's all going to come together. And not everything needs to make sense, but it should at least have a coherent beginning, middle, and end to where that it's not, like you said, frustrating to watch and that it actually has a, a decent climax and a decent resolution by the end of it. But because it is Evangelion, you know it's not. So it makes it even more frustrating watching these characters act well, the way they do. Well, it's not even my expectations that ruin it for me. But maybe even more so than frustration with the characters, it's the fact that I am a little bit frustrated with the characters. And then when things happen and they start talking about like, they start throwing all these terms around. And like you were saying that quote you pulled where Shinji said, I understood. It's like that happens throughout the show so much where they're just like doing word and term salad. And it's like, yeah. Hey man, this is esoteric knowledge. Like I am not a scholar of Kabbalah. Like, I don't know what y'all are talking about right now. Like, like this is, it's just nuts. It's crazy. So in, in film form, it's, a lot to try to absorb and follow to the point where I'm like, Oh, I don't care now. Yeah. Like it's, it's so much now that I'm just waiting for this movie to be over. So I cannot watch the next one. Like the reason I, I feel like the, like, I don't need to, like you said, the character, you don't like the characters. Like I, I feel like I don't need to like these characters. I feel like what makes them, uh, kind of relatable and like kind of more realistic than a lot of characters uh especially in anime is that they are so flawed and like you get like from the outside looking in you can say like why don't you just do this or why don't you just do that but like as you know especially being like a piece of art created by a person that struggled uh with depression like that is a very like you know that's like a real thing you see it in you you see this the his own like personal struggle kind of reflected in the characters um and like just the the, the desolate like the, all the red the red lakes and like the red hues of everything like has this very like grim atmosphere that kind of like for me it pulled me in i'm just like man what's going to happen you know what's going to happen next like i have to know like even though it ends up being like nonsense i'm still like I got to see what's happening because there's enough, there's always enough happening, like either visually or like, I I want to understand the word salad. Like I want to be there. Like I want, I want it to be maybe more than it is. So like, that's what keeps me, uh, you know, that's what pulls me in. Like, I want to understand even if I, I can't, you know what? Does that make sense? I guess I just think we don't relate because I don't. Yeah, no, I I, um, I, I I figure you guys don't. I, I sense I, that you guys don't don't feel that way, but I yeah, I want I want it to I I appreciate what he's doing. I want him to do it different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and like me too. Like he, you know, and we all have our things about what we would do different. But I'm just saying, like I think the reason that it has such a following and it is such an influential uh thing that it is is because a lot of people experience a lot of different feelings from from it and it's well, not as of, cut and dry as other things well i wonder if this and this this is a loaded question i already know the answer but i'm asking it anyway rhetorically um but i wonder if this uh has the success that it does without the original series. The answer is no, obviously not. Um, I, I, I think that if the endings, whichever one, either the original or the end of Ava that they redid, I think, uh, if that is something that you bought into, if that's something that didn't turn you off, then anything that, these movies are going to offer you probably also won't turn you off. But for me, I liked Evangelion up until the end. The end is where it got dumb um, for me. So like this 
to me, it's, I don't want to compare all of these films to the end of Evangelion, um, because they're not, but, but like, I don't know. Maybe I'm contradicting something I said earlier, AJ, with expectations. Um, since I know that Ava is about this, ends up being about this really weird thing, this weird, this weird expression of dealing with depression and acceptance and, and all of these human emotions and connection or whatever. Since I, I know that's like the main driver going into the rebuilds. It is kind of like, yeah, you're just ready for some bullshit and not necessarily just for the nonsensical bullshit, but also just like them saying things. And you're like, wait, what? Where the when you watch logical bullshit doesn't really start until the fourth movie, I would say. Oh, uh, you, you point out a lot of stuff about like with Kauru where he was like, you know, where he just kind of gets kind of uh, nonchalant about things for a bit. And like, especially when he was just like, hmm, well played, King of, of the Lillen, Gendo Ikari. And it's just like, huh? It's just like, yeah. is he, is he a pawn? I, I, I guess he ends up being a pawn. Everybody is a pawn of Gendo in the end. And you're just like, doesn't he realize that? Or I guess he doesn't realize it until the thing with the spears where there's two of the same spear and not, you know, the other and not the two different ones. And then, <laughs> which reminds me at the end of the fourth, like all of a sudden they create a spear out of, out of who the hell knows what. And they create yeah, what some the hell kind of, was that? they create the spear of hope out of, out of whatever. Out of nothing, they yeah. Fly through what's her face's hand into her eye, and then a spear pops out. Yeah, see, man, the problem is all this <laughs> stuff, all this symbolism. Like it's cool, I guess. Like in in a con- in a conceptual frame, yeah. But you can only do so much of that before I want to know like what anything means, and I don't need to know all the specifics. It's just that there's like so many weird things in them in and of themselves happening that I'm like, what does that mean? And then they just say like the angels were sent because of the original sin of man. It's like, well, what the fuck was the original sin of man? Like, what are you talking about? I mean, and I then, don't need to know and, what that is, but, but uh, I mean, I, I kind of want to know. Yeah. I mean, if, I'd like if to there's know, a, but like, if there's a race of beings that are kept ca- like constantly continuing to, uh, threaten apocalypse on the earth. I kind of want to know why they're doing it. Like, I, I don't need to know all of the questions, but there are big questions that I want to know. Yeah. I'm, uh, I guess I, I, I prefer to have more interesting situations created from the, the big questions, like whatever, like we were saying with Nighthead, like, uh, it's a futuristic, you know, the government is very uh, authoritarian and you're not allowed to think freely like, like, yeah, that's kind of cookie cutter. But the story that they were telling within that context was was interesting. So, yeah, like, I, I think you can have both. Yeah, no, like I'm not both. saying you can't, but like, <laughs> you know, if you had if you had to choose. But anyway, and and I reiterate. If that was the only thing that was on the table that I'm like, what's that mean? Then yeah. maybe I'd be with you. Then maybe I'd be like, yeah, you know what? I don't really need to know that. But it's like Spears and Lillian and Adam and Sins and Guff and Duff and <laughs> and Iscariot and Eskelion and whatever well, just else. when you think you've got you've heard all the terms there's a new term that comes yeah. out yeah well they like, really where they the hell turn, does this come into play they yeah it's like they were pretty consistent with their terminology through like the third movie and then the fourth movie they they just start throwing all kinds of banana shit at you and then on top of that there's a lot of uh like the characters are like man this is really messed up so like like they say that two or three times towards the end, and then it's like this character, this one character, uh, 
Sakura, who's just like, you know, she's got like the 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 pouty lips and the pouty anime lips. And uh she just like all of a sudden has like becomes this main character where she's like violently opposed to, you know, Shinji getting back into Ava and just like, where the hell did like we're supposed to care about her now? Um Yeah, that was the thing. As soon as I saw her character, they didn't do much with her in the third movie, but as soon as I saw her, I was just like, I hate her. I hate yeah, her yeah, it's just like uh, because like you, you don't you don't fit. You look like you're from a trigger anime. Put in, yeah, it's like the whole. Yeah. It's like the whole like we just flipped the script. I get that things are gonna look different because it's 14 years in the future. 100 percent get that, but it it was like a a specific or drastic style shift in a yeah. couple of ways where I was like, this is glaring and this is gonna be annoying. Like I know it's going to be right. Yeah, but anyways, right. uh, we've been going long, so we should probably wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, all of that just meandering and, <laughs> and ranting and venting uh, to say that there to to reiterate that there there really is nothing like Evangelion in whatever form you consume it. Uh, you should watch it, whoever you are. Uh, so you can know what the hell everybody's talking about and decide what it, what it means to you and maybe try to understand it. And in doing so, maybe understand yourself a little better. I don't know. What do but you guys Don't think? listen to this podcast before you watch it. Yeah. In hindsight. So <laughs> honestly, they might be thoroughly confused enough this is they like go in blind that it won't even spoil them this is a microcosm <laughs> there's of, no spoilers uh, of you honestly i don't think you could spoil evangelion if you wanted to i mean yeah you can give away a few plot points but like the experience the, of it is i'm gonna have to think thing. about that because i don't know whether or not i agree with you or not no i do think the not experience of it like the slow burn of the tension and just the 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 gloom uh it's something you need to be there for the whole time like you can say like oh yeah. human instrumentality everybody becomes one you know entity of orange goo but like that doesn't that's not what that's not what evangelion's about i think the only i think the only real way that you can spoil it is it does what a lot of anime have done in the past where in the end you find out it's about something different than what you thought it was because I remember watching yeah. the original series, like it took a while before it gets weird. And then the very end in the original, it's about ending, halfway through the series before it gets weird. Is it? Okay. Even the rebuilds I would say is about halfway through the rebuilds before it gets weird. Once yeah, the time jump hits, it gets weird. You're probably, you're probably right. But, um, but yeah, cause I remember watching it originally. Like I just thought it was like some mech show. I didn't know right. it was going to be, I didn't know it was going to end up in Shinji's head. Well, back then Which, it was like, oh, I, you would see shirts that say like, I understood Evangelion. It's like, okay, something weird right. must happen, but you had no idea what until you watched it. Exactly. Like, you don't know he's going to just be in his head explaining like, like this is reality. And then you don't know the end of Evangelion is going to be the weird ass apocalypse that it is. Right. Um, so you could. If if somebody's coming in really fresh, you could spoil them. You could. If somebody has a, a inkling that it gets weird like that, then there's not much you could spoil, I don't think. Right. All right. On that note, I'm going to wrap it up. Do it. Thanks for listening, everybody. Follow us on Twitter at BrokeOtaku and at BrokeOtakuCast, where we post stuff about the podcast. Uh, brokeotaku.com for all your favorite anime deals and join us next time when we talk about something we haven't decided yet and enjoy more the anime. Evangelion more anime uh, that's all I got we're, so we're gonna read the Evangelion mangas and then talk about it some more psych, <laughs> psych. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do maybe probably not alright see you guys next time Thanks, Bye -bye. everybody. I love you. Bye. Peace.